Hello everybody, on this episode of Amiga 600 crap, there's something going on with my uh, external disk drive port. So what we're going to do is as water drains above me, because everything is always so damn noisy around here, we're going to slap ever so carefully the keyboard out of here. What am I looking for? Well, number one, I'm feeling for immense heat. It is very hot over here. But I think one of my capacitors, see this row of caps behind the pins? E581R, E587R, 89991992, whatever, all that stuff. So 88's right there. Anyway, one of these puppies, and it's usually this one at the end, right there, that looks just a little bit different. This probably popped. Get yourself a multimeter and set it on the continuity and the continuity looks like a little Wi-Fi like symbol when you touch them together so anyway what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this for continuity and I'm gonna probe each side of these good bad come on I can't get in here you can remove these tips to make it more spiky and longer and then if you can't see, you can put two pair of glasses on. Oh man. Good, 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 good. So what I'm doing is this. Okay. I'm gonna try. So this is backwards on the 600. This, this capacitor right here. I'm gonna take, here I have continuity. It's usually the one right next to it. I can tell you it's blown right now because I can see it. Not. Good on this one. This one. Watch this. Touch it. It, will just bust, it just busted right in half. So right there. So. There's two ways I can do this. I can cheat and bridge the whole thing with solder. Because that's my 12 volt. That will make my external disk drive work again. But if it blows up. It could fry one of my CIAs, and I don't want to do that, because those suckers are also surface mount. Now, I'm a, I'm a big fan of using Flux, and I use uh, Kester, oh, you can't see that, I use, I use Kester uh, No Clean Flux, I buy it off of eBay, so I'm going to Flux this area. And yes, I should take the board out here with the broken BS on the bottom. It's going to be R591 right here. And this is 4.7. Uh, and this might be way overkill. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 4.7 and I'm going to trim it. And I'm going to make a surface mount part even though I shouldn't I should not do this I should just take the correct part off of a junk board and uh, put the right part on there but I don't care oh man this is a dumb idea but I don't have the right component but I want to get this working and I am making an elevated service mount for that. okay I made a resistor off of a through-hole component, a surface mount part. Now, where did I get this information from? Amiga PCB Explorer. If you... With that repaired, let's uh, just do some ghetto assembly.
when this burned down I wasn't aware I had the Amiga 1010 drive hooked up to it and it appeared to work but flash floppy is on the floppy Amiga is booting we're going to use the drive okay so here is the Amiga DOS with our repaired floppy fuse here's DH0 I do not have the compact flash card in yet so we're going to insert the GoTech drive here and it is on uh, update 3.1.4.1 okay and does it see it booyah update 3141 there it is this is workbench 2 it's never going to install if it did it wouldn't do anything and then we're back to uh, I can flip the discs which is the whole reason I needed this in the first place FAT95 on an external GoTech with the fuse repaired using through hole components on surface mount junk so now I'm going to put all the screws back in this thing and uh, all the back pieces to get it sorted properly screwed back down and then we'll be good to go that is how you repair the uh, the fuse on uh, E598R on the Amiga 600 external floppy port top layer with a through hole 4.7 or 4 amp pico fuse from an Amiga 2000 or 500 on an Amiga 600 because I didn't have any surface mount uh, fuses so that's all for me thank you for watching and I hope you learned something